Hey, what's up, people? Is your spindle weak? Mine is. No matter how many times I try to turn it on, it just won't get up to speed. I end up having to give it some manual persuasion, and then I can finally drill for as long as I want. Although, if I try to get it going again after I've just recently turned it on, sometimes it will spin back up like that. It just uh, takes it a little bit of effort for it to like start spinning. So, uh, what could be the issue? Well, if you flip it over to the back side where the motor is located, I believe our problem is going to be hiding underneath this bulge right here. And what we're going to see underneath there is a capacitor. So, I think this motor has a bad capacitor. And hopefully putting in this new one, we'll get it going again with like no issues. So this drill press happens to be an old Daytona drill press model number DF16. And it has a date of 1992. So at this point, it's over what, 20 or 32 years old or just about. So I'm pretty sure that capacitor has never been replaced on this thing. And so after we remove it, uh, we'll check it out. Uh, this drill press was actually uh, given to me by the uh, same dude that I got that LED uh, light bar from. He was also getting rid of it, and you know, he told me that it, if as long as you like rotate it, it'll start up. And I thought, ah, it's probably going to be a capacitor. So yeah, let's check it out. Let's see what we can do. So removing this cover is easy enough. There's just two Phillips screws that are holding this lid in place, and we don't actually need to remove both of them. I don't think we can just remove one completely, like say the bottom one. Then the upper one, we can just kind of loosen up and this entire cover comes off. And as we can see, there's two wires going inside and then we got two wires going to the capacitor. So I'm just going to pull this out and it feels like this is all wax. I'm not sure if like these capacitors are like wax filled or something, but I had actually already uh, pulled it out so I could get the like the length and the, the girth of that capacitor there so I could try to match it up. Uh, I end, ended up ordering this one on eBay, and it got shipped all the way from China, and it actually came in really quick. It only took like seven days to arrive. So, as we can see, the uh, capacitor is a 150 microfarad capacitor at 250 volts AC. So, this was pretty much an exact replacement for this one. And this cover is going to need to come off so I can have some access to the terminals. There we go. So exactly same type of terminal we can see. So this should be a easy replacement, but maybe I'll clean up a bunch of this. Yeah, there's like a bunch of wax in there. So yeah, I'm going to try to give it at least somewhat of a cleaning. This capacitor feels super light. Maybe we'll even cut it open and see what it looks like inside. But uh, replacing it is easy enough. Just need to remove these two screws. And it looks like it's just got uh, some of those like forked terminals. There we go. That was easy. Oh, yeah. Check that out. So that thing like blew open at some point. You can see right into the inside of that, that capacitor. So, <laughs> yeah, this is definitely dead. So to get the majority of this stuff off, I'm just going to use this plastic blade. That way I kind of avoid scratching up the paint on the motor. And this definitely makes quick work of this. And it's kind of funny how it seems to like have gone upwards. Yeah, there's like wax like way up here on the uh, top motor cover where the shaft comes out. So after I scrape everything off, then I think what I'll do is maybe I'll get a like a paper uh, towel or something like soak it in some WD-40 and just try to rub the rest of that residue off. We'll see how that does. Uh, as far as I'm aware, I believe that WD-40 should be able to remove wax residue, but I guess we'll see. Uh, that paint's scratch right there, so that's not wax. Okay, I think that's about as clean as I'm going to be able to get it, just scraping off the wax with that plastic razor. So I'm going to spray some WD-40 on this paper towel. And see how this does. Removing some of the residue. Yeah, definitely seems to be helping. I mean, this thing could probably do with like an entirely new paint job by now, but not about to do that anytime soon. So I'm just going to 
clean off as much of the residue as I can. All right, I think that's going to do it. I don't think I'm going to go too crazy with this. And I also gave the cover a bit of a cleaning, although I think a wax residue is the least of its issues. It's got a lot of flaking paint and a little bit of denting. So this thing could probably do with a, like a sandblasting and an entirely new paint job. But eh, this is the least of our worries right now. We just want to get the thing working. I scraped as much as I could off the inside as well. That's not perfect, like I said, but not really going for a beauty queen or anything here. A big old chunk of wax came out from the inside of that terminal cap. All right, so I'm just going to put these terminals back in through the holes, or the hole. By the way, make sure you unplug the drill press if you're going to be doing this. I just realized that I forgot to unplug this one. Whoops. Okay, it's unplugged now. All right, let's continue. So it's this capacitor is not polarized, so it doesn't matter which one each uh, terminal goes to or where each uh, one of these uh, connectors of terminals, or you know what I mean. So I'm just going to tighten these down. Okay, looks like this has gotten stretched out a bit, so it doesn't quite fit inside of the that sort of a little cup terminal there, but this one fits just fine. So I'm going to have to squeeze this one together a little bit. So just go ahead and put this one on at least. Okay, so I'm just going to squeeze those two just together like that. Make sure they're still pretty parallel. That should be good enough. Okay. So put this cap on the capacitor. And it looks like it's got sort of a little retainer right there that it locks onto the capacitor with. So that feels pretty secure. I can put this back on. I don't remember which side was what. It doesn't really matter. All right, there we go. Much better looking now. All right, let's give it a test run. So I'm going to take the plug. I'm going to plug it in and let that drop down. Now let's see. Is this going to come up right away? I mean, it should. I'm pretty sure that was the only issue. Oh, holy crap. That was like instantaneous. So, yep, definitely no issues now. So, yeah, that's all I needed was just a new capacitor. With as bad as this thing looks, we know that the capacitance is going to be, like, pretty pathetic. But let's just see what it is, just out of curiosity. So, I've already made sure that I've, like, shorted the terminals on the capacitor. You're supposed to do that before you actually test it with this thing. But <laughs> let's see what this thing says. 2.86 microfarads, so, yep, I'd say it's pretty dead. Now, I was going to try to open it using one of these tubing cutters, but unfortunately, both of the ones I have are the same size, and they are not big enough to go around it, so I'm just going to have to do this uh, a different way, and I'm just going to peel off all this plastic on the outside, and I can pull this out, so there's the aluminum can. feels pretty hollow. I mean, we're not going to see much of anything all that exciting in here, but I thought it'd be interesting to just kind of look at anyway. So I'm just going to use these cutters and try to separate the can where it's crimped around the outside. And this is aluminum, so it's pretty soft. So maybe I'll even kind of like sardine can it and pull it off this way. Ah, There we go. It's pretty loose now. So let's see. There it is. Looks like <laughs> I guess it has a little bit of electrolytic or something in there or electrolyte. I mean, it. Looks like it's, well, maybe not. Maybe that's just the wax. I don't know what all this white stuff is. Almost looks like little <laughs> bacterial cultures. And inside looks like we got a little bit of like crystalline looking stuff. So I'm guessing that maybe the wax is somehow like mixed with a little bit of uh, electrolyte of some sort. And that's what the surface of the paper looks like if you're interested. And that's the uh, crystalline stuff that I'm talking about. So you can see how we got those little like marshmallow fluffy looking things on the surface. And then we got a little bit of like crystalline stuff. So I'm going to make sure that I wash my hands really well after I'm done with this stuff. I I want to be contaminating other things, but there's more of those uh, crystal looking thingies. The uh, fibers from the paper. You can see that's where the uh, roll. Actually, it looks like maybe that's partially where it exploded. Because this paper is all torn and the end of the roll is actually over on this end. 
we can see inside. So I'm guessing that fluffy white looking stuff is part of uh, what forms these uh, little crystalline shapes. Yeah, we can peel this up. Inside, we're probably going to see the one of the foil layers. Ah, there it is. So there's some of the actual foil that makes up the terminals of the capacitor. We can see how that one goes down to one of the terminals that goes to the outside. And that's sort of like, kind of like riveted onto the, the actual sheet. We can see that the surface of the material looks like it's been like etched and that's probably just to increase its like surface area. So yeah, that's all we're gonna see if we unroll this. It's just a bunch of like foil and paper. There's the other terminal. Whoa, it looks like that one like arced over or something. That looks pretty burnt. Oh yeah, look, that looks like it kind of like tore through the paper and it shorted against the other side. So maybe that's what actually made this thing blow out. There's the vent hole. That's where it popped open. So this hole is supposed to be there, but on the other side, it's supposed to be sealed with this sort of like rubber coating unless something drastic happens. So it looks like that's what happened is that it like somehow shorted inside. It maybe like boiled over and it popped open. Well, that was actually kind of interesting. I didn't expect to see that, but yeah. And on the inside of the can, we can just see more of that residue. A lot of uh, crystalline looking stuff inside as well. Looks like it's some of it's like etched aluminum in there. So there we go. I'm happy that a capacitor was pretty much all it really needed to get it going again. I mean, it could definitely use some work in as far as like a cleaning, uh, as we can see. If I wipe off this cord, that's just a little section of it. Yeah, it's it's uh, pretty filthy. So <laughs> we uh, wipe the top right there. Yeah, see, it's got a lot of like d dust and a bunch of like junk built up. But I mean, overall, I'm just happy to have this because I've been actually wanting uh, sort of a large uh, drill press for a while now. For years, I've been using my little uh, Harbor Freight eight inch like little um, Weenie Hut Junior one. <laughs> which has gotten the job done for a lot of things, but I would have liked, you know, something larger for uh, like bigger jobs. And this is certainly going to fit the bill. It has a lot of grime and stuff built up from all the years that I'm sure it's been used. But overall, it's mostly complete. It needs like a few things here and there. Like on the other side, it has a, it's missing a knob to like secure this lid shut because uh, it has nothing to hold it at the moment. And when you uh, turn this on, and uh, this lid isn't secure, like it rattles a lot, so you, it makes a lot of noise. But that's not a big deal. I can deal with all of that stuff like later on. So yeah, that's gonna do it for this one. So if you've got a drill with a similar issue where the spindle takes a while to spin up, it could just be a bad capacitor. And so you might wanna take a look into that. We're just gonna leave it here. Thank you all for watching once again, and I will see you guys around the bench.